Hello everyone, this is Daniel Badijo. I would like to talk to you under the title, Eliminate Non-Value Added Activities. It really doesn't matter if you are a religious organization. It doesn't matter if you are in a manufacturing business, if you are in a service business, or maybe even merchandise. It doesn't matter if you are a running a partnership or a proprietary ship, an LLC, or a corporate entity. Non-valued added activities will undoubtedly affect your business practices, your productivity, and ultimately your financial bottom line. If you really procrastinate in identifying and dealing with non-value added activities, you will suffer its consequences down the line. So what is exactly non-value added activities? And forgive me for being oversimplistic in this uh, definition, but non-value means of no value, of no worth, which means that it has no usefulness or importance to the matter at hand. With that said, let me provide you with a really basic life example. If you're running late to work one morning and you encounter heavy traffic on the highway that maybe has come to a standstill, if you begin to actively uh, yell and get frustrated, throwing your hands in the air and complaining about the traffic, it will not change your present situation. Of course, yelling will make you feel good, and yelling is a visual and audible response to to let people know that you disagree about the present situation, but it will not make any vehicle go faster. Therefore, there is no return on investment for the activity of yelling and complaining. So now let's get technical about non-value-added activities. The business dictionary defines non-valued added activities as generating a zero or negative return on investment of resources and usually can be eliminated without impairing a process. So today I want to take a moment to really uh, give you uh, some a summary of what these seven popular basic waste streams of manufacturing Uh, called under the title non-value added activities and also provide five tips, simply five tips on how to eliminate non-value added activities from your life, your business, and your non-profit organization. I remember uh, many years ago when I was studying uh, to become a Lean Six Sigma black belt that I was first introduced to the seven wastes of lean manufacturing of these non-valued added activities. And the way I was taught about these seven waste streams is through the acronym TIMWOOD. And the first T stands for transport, the I stands for inventory, the M stands for motion, the W stands for waste, the O is overprocessing, the next O is overproduction, and the D stood for defects. So when you think about non-value added activities in transport, it means really there is no one piece flow. Materials or raw materials are moving to this direction and that direction. And really there is no rhyme or reason on on how the material actually flows or how material is transported from one location to another. And this not necessarily has to do with materials, but also with information, with paperwork. How is information and paperwork being transported from one building to another building or cross-functional departments or through uh, emails or or faxes or whatever other uh, media there is to transport information? And you have to understand that it adds no value to the product or to the service. uh, And the customer is not paying for the internal transport. So if it adds no value to the end product, and the customer is not paying for the internal transport, and that way there is a waste in transport. The second is inventory, and we're talking about inventory, we're talking about supplies, we're talking about raw materials, and products that are considered to to the company uh, that are just simply standing still and are, are not being sold. This means excess inventory that you're just having idle and there are no min or max levels in your inventory levels. And therefore, if they're not being sold, they're adding no value to your process and the customer is not really paying for material that is idle. 
So if your inventory sits idle without being used or sold, this is also considered part of the waste stream. The second, the third, sorry, is motion. Another waste stream is motion and another non-value added activity. And any non-essential motion in a work cell, in a production line, in an assembly line, or movement that's done by machine or done by uh, personnel that adds no value to the end product is actually a waste stream. There is a non-value activity factor placed on that particular motion. So poor workstation layouts uh, really are the root cause of excess motion. And companies spend literally millions upon millions across the globe trying to exercise Kaizen events or Kaizen Blitz, 6S events, and all sorts of ergonomic activities to reduce motion and increase safety. And remember, if the customer is not paying for excess, excessive motion, then of course motion itself is a waste within your organization. The other uh, waste stream is a waiting. That's the fourth uh, uh, waste stream. And when you have employees just simply sitting around, waiting on material, waiting on paperwork, waiting on information, waiting on deliverables such as uh, a disposition of, of an approval of a product, of a, a bill of material, etc. Uh, and there's a lot of lagging time in, in between, then waiting itself is a waste when you calculate how much time uh, people wait in an entire year, the the opportunity cost is, is really astronomical. It's just uh, what could you have done with that idle time where people are simply waiting for things uh, to be delivered to them or to be provided to them. The first O, uh, o in the acronym TINWOOD is overprocessing. And overprocessing has to do with all this double handling, recounting, the redundancy of information that is duplicated and entered into various computer platforms. Uh, rework is also another overprocessing. Uh, increased inspections and all sorts of equipment that is used to, to uh, actually reinspect. Uh, it's, it's called overprocessing. Overprocessing is, is not a variable when calculating job costs. So in the cust if the customer is not paying for overprocessing in the job cost, then overprocessing itself, again, is a waste. It is a non-value added activity. Later, we have now overproduction. Overproduction simply means too much work in process or too much finished goods waiting for a purchase order, waiting for someone to pick it up. It's in your warehouse. It's simply standing there because you have overproduced uh, and have have not adhered to the maybe uh, made to order quantities or to the uh, quantities that were initially on your purchase orders. Sometimes companies they overproduce for not having a grip on their schedule forecast. They make extra material just in case we don't get rid get uh, get it right the first time, or for fear of for the customer ordering something unexpectedly, and we want to make sure that we have it in stock. That uh, And the dangers for that is when you have material that is so prolonged in stock and it's, you may never sell it. And if you may never sell it, it may become obsolete with time. This means that the customer is not paying for this particular uh, length width or whatever uh, geometric dimension it may have. You may have material in stock right now that is the incorrect revision. It's an old revision, and the customer is no longer purchasing that type of material. So anytime you overproduce, anytime you have excess inventory, anytime you have excess inventory maybe on a make and hold or, or excess inventory on consignment, that is considered overproduction. When you are doing your uh, in, annual inventory and you have too much whip, uh, for whatever reason, for poor forecasting, that itself is too uh, a waste stream and is a non-value added activity. Last but not least, we have defects. And these are quality errors or misinformation on a purchase order, misinformation on a uh, bill of material, misinformation on data entry errors, and so many other things that can create defects. Uh, defects throughout your process that does not meet the final specification, the aesthetic spe specification. 
it does not adhere to that first piece, last piece quality, and therefore you have to remake the product. And if you have to remake the product, that itself is considered a non-value added activity. These defects are very costly and you must conduct a root cause analysis, uh, potentially what's called a fishbone diagram to really get to the factors that are creating the defects and assign personnel and countermeasures in order to eliminate that variable. So in summary, companies that are able to estimate the cost of these ineffective processes and reduce the impact of these seven deadly waste streams are able to reduce the cost of poor quality and increase overall productivity and overall efficiency. So that is simply a, a general summary of these non-value added activities via the seven waste streams of uh, cost of poor quality. So when you uh, try to eliminate that and identify that as soon as possible, you'll run a, a better efficient uh, company, better efficient organization, a much more efficient uh, church, and you'll have higher OEE and productivity. So now that I've given you that brief introduction to this uh, technical term, let me, let me just switch it around so that you'll see how you can provi uh, uh, put this actually apply this to your life and to all your endeavors. So now let me provide five tips on how to eliminate non-value added activities in your personal life. The first thing you have to eliminate in your life as far as a, a non-value activity is non-value partnerships. The incorrect business or ministry partnerships can make you lose precious time can make you lose precious, precious energy and capital. You must take the time in your agenda to really assess whether your partnerships are sowing into your life or withdrawing from your life. Ask yourself, can I rely on these partnerships? Do the partnerships actually advance my career or prevent me from making forward progress? So eliminate the non-valued partnerships from your life. The second, eliminate non-value added relationships from your life. Many times your personal love relationship or so-called friendship relationships prevent you from achieving your goals. If you are surrounded by people that do not believe in your dreams, do not believe in your aspirations, or they do not motivate you, encourage you uh, to pursue that which has always been in your heart, then you need to evaluate whether these are the right relationships for you, especially in this season. And I know these are tough decisions to make, but I want to encourage you to surround yourself with genuine, trustworthy individuals who will back you up and contribute toward your goals. When it comes to your love relationships, ask yourself, can I trust this person? Does this person truly love me? Do they respect and honor me? Do I feel uplifted and encouraged? Does this person hold me back from accomplishing my objectives? Or is it, uh, is it he or she a person that actually motivates me and sows into uh, my dreams and my aspirations? And it's also a bilateral thing. Uh, you have to ask yourself, are you also contributing to their dreams and aspirations? But Ask yourself these questions because these are very important to eliminate non-value added relationships from your life. So sometimes people uh, keep entertaining unproductive relationships and remain stagnant for years on end. Therefore, having the correct person by your side will ensure that you'll have someone special to lean on when times get rough. Third, eliminate non-value added locations. And I heard the saying long, long time ago that says, where you don't grow, you must go. Let me say it again. It's so simple that it's so profound. Where you don't grow, you must go. It sounds simple, but it's so true. You must reflect on uh, whether the place that you're in, the location that you're in, actually challenges you. Does it motivate you? Does it inspire you? If you're not being challenged, motivated, or inspired, then you'll not feel as if you're contributing to your dreams and personal development. You'll feel stagnant at a standstill. So evaluate those locations and eliminate non-value added locations. Remember, where you don't grow, you must go. Fourth, eliminate non-value investments. So let me ask you, what are you investing in? What are you purchasing 
that has made you feel uh, if it has made you feel a step closer to your dreams or further from your dreams. If what you are purchasing is not making you feel closer to your dreams, then you have to eliminate non-value investments. You must evaluate your financial portfolio investments, uh, your equipment, your software, your design investments. If your investments are not yielding a significant return on investment, then a modification is needed in your life. So once again, look at all your investments. Look at your portfolio. Look at the things that you have purchased for your dreams, your aspirations, your business in itself. And ask yourself, did I, did I purchase the right things? Did I uh, acquire the right assets that will get me closer to my dream? Or simply I bought things that I really will never use will sit on the shelf, will collect dust, and I will definitely forget that they were there to begin with. Why? Because they add no value to your investments. So eliminate non-value added investments. Last but not least, as a, as a tip, the fifth tip is to eliminate non-value added emotions. There are feelings and emotions that hold you back. That is definitely a given. You may be selling yourself short by saying that you can't do it, that you'll never accomplish it, that you're not worth it, that you're not smart enough. And sometimes you let fear, doubt, and low self-esteem hold you back. But it is imperative that you think positively about yourself and believe in your potential. So this season, uh, believe in yourself, believe in your capacity, believe in your strengths, believe in your gifts. Do this mentally and spiritually. Cast out all non-value added emotions that prevent your peace and your success. So let's recap these five tips that I wanted to provide for you uh, to eliminate non-value added activities from your life. The first is to eliminate non-value added partnerships. The second is to eliminate non-value added relationships. The third is to eliminate non-value added locations. The fourth is to eliminate non-value added investments. And last is to eliminate non-value added emotions. So I want to conclude by saying the following. I, I truly believe that if you make the necessary adjustments to eliminate these non-value added activities from your life, your career and your business, you will make great strides toward a, toward a better future and a prosperous lifestyle. So eliminate non-value added activities so that you may have a brighter and greater future ahead.